Hi, I'm Clark Dennis Cundeth, uh, the pastor at Bay Lake United Methodist Church in Virginia Beach, Virginia at 4300 Shore Drive and coming to you this morning on January the 30th, 2022, talking about what is love? What is love? That's um, what we live for, isn't it? It's what God gives us unconditionally. God loves us unconditionally. It's a sacrificial commitment because God loved us so much he sent his son Jesus to be fully human, fully divine, to live on this earth. And he loved us so much. And he showed that by his life and maybe most importantly, or most importantly, his suffering on the cross that we may be forgiven of our sins and then dying for us. That we, then being raised from the dead so we know we have this gift of eternal life. That is love. And Paul knew this. And Paul was talking to the church at Corinth because they, and we've talked about the, our spiritual gifts and we're stronger together and they are celebrating these spiritual gifts, but they were quarreling. <laughs> and Paul was trying to let them know how best to use these spiritual gifts by incorporating that love that God has for us through Jesus Christ. The love we receive from God and to love God back, but to love each other. So he talks about it in 1 Corinthians 13, probably one of the most popular <clears throat> portions of scripture because it's almost inevitably read at every wedding. And yes, does, does God's love feel that love for each other, feel that romantic love, the love for parent or child? Absolutely. So it begins talking about the importance of love. If I speak in tongues, one of the spiritual gifts, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Without love, it's just noise, right? If I have prophetic powers, another spiritual gift, and understand all mysteries and have knowledge, another spiritual gift, and faith, another spiritual gift. And that faith so powerful I can move mountains. The scripture says you can move this mountain from here to here, right? You have that faith you choose to believe. But do not have love, I am, I'm nothing. If I give away all my possessions, prayers, presence, gifts, service, witness, we vow as we join the Methodist Church. Yeah, this is a great giveaway. I'm trying to give away more and more all the time. But if I do that, and if I hand over my body that I may boast, and do not have love, I gain nothing. went to a funeral a couple years ago, our family, and it was a wonderful family, but their, their son of only a year and a half that died from cancer. And it was, as you might imagine, sad, but it was filled with people, but indeed it was a true celebration of life, like almost none I've been a part of before. It was full and rich and came lots of smiles and lots of adventures that he talked about with his mom and dad and his brothers and three sisters. And I was so moved by the amazing show of love by the family and the friends and all who spoke. And, and I couldn't, I have to know I couldn't stop crying myself, but not so much from grief. And yes, as there was sorrow, it's loosened when so young. But from joy of such a relationship all this family had together with each other and God, they truly, had love, love for God, love for each other, love for their son who's now with God in heaven. But they had discovered and lived that divineness of, of love, right? Remember we lost our, our wonderful Scarlet a few years ago, Chihuahua, uh, gone too soon maybe, but as you know, pets are part of your family. And I, I oh gosh, I grieved. Yeah, you know, just as you grieve when you lose a, a parent or a grandparent. It was because I cared for <laughs> Scarlett. I cared for my parents. I cared for my grandparents. Out of that amazing love. Well, Paul gives us a little hint to what is love. <clears throat> Starting in verse 4, he says, he talks about all these things that love is. Of course, he's 
talking to the church at Corinth, and uh, by intimating these are what love is, and to us, he's <clears throat> pointing to the places where maybe we are not this way. Love is patient. Yeah, pray for patience. <laughs> Be careful what you pray for. Love is kind. It's not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It doesn't insist on its own way. It's always that love is looking to the interests of others, even before myself. Now, yeah, you're supposed to take care of yourself. I take care of myself so I can take care of others. Absolutely. But I do it out of love for others, so I want to be the best version of Clark Dennis kind of I can, so I can help other people as long as God chooses to keep me here on this earth. Doesn't insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. I don't covet what my neighbor has. I don't think. It's not irritable or resentful. Doesn't rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. And where do we get the truth? The divinely inspired word of God, right? Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. How powerful. Love, right? And in verse 8, I love this, love never ends. If you truly love someone, whether they're still here or they're gone to be with God in heaven or maybe you're not uh, in contact with them anymore for whatever reason, I still think that love is still there. It's, I mean, it's not an unlimited fountain. The power of the Holy Spirit fuels love that we can give to everybody all the time, right? Love never ends. Then he goes and talks about these other gifts. <laughs> guess what? They're great and they're wonderful, but guess what? They're going to end. And he talks about growth. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned. But then I became an adult and I put an end to childish way. And he, he kind of talks about that final coming to God, coming to be with God. But also it's about that growth, that spiritual growth, right? I want to grow from the time I'm in Sunday school or whatever. I have my relationship with God to deepen that. So when I do face those tough things like, Losing a spouse, losing a sibling. And I've got that foundation to call upon. And the last verse, verse 13. And now, faith, hope, and love abide. These three, and the greatest of these is love. What is love? <laughs> love is about life, right? And we always need to know that the first and foremost way that fuels our love is the love of God for us. That God loves us unconditionally all the time, no matter what. God loves us. And wherever we are, no matter what we've done or, or haven't done, God loves us. And nothing, as Paul says in Romans 8.38, can separate us from the love of God. If we feel God distant, guess what? <laughs> It wasn't God that moved, it was me, right? And that God's love for each one of us is embodied in that life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Maybe that's the definition of love. To love is Jesus' love. To be willing to suffer for another. To give your life for another. <laughs> Maybe just to be nice to one another. To go shovel the neighbor's driveway when the snow comes. And be anonymous, right? <laughs> Somebody guessed it was me, but <laughs> but a number of our pads in our area were, were shoveled before I even got out to shovel ours. And somebody thought it was me. I said, it wasn't me, but it was somebody out of love for another that was a servant in that way. Love is a verb. Love, the feeling, is the fruit of love, the verb. It calls us to action, calls us to go and do. Paul pairs it to all these different actions, whether they're active or passive, that defines what love is. And that Paul's description of love awakens believers to the transformation and renewal of love in the body of Jesus Christ. And that love is active, it's tough, it's resilient.
And remember, when all else fails, love endures. May we know that we are loved by God, created in God's image of immense worth and value. And that God loves us. God loves you. Receive that love. Let it fill you to overflowing so you can love God back and love each other. What is love? Maybe it's that glue that holds us together as brothers and sisters in Christ, as humanity, branches on the same tree of life. Enables us to do amazing things. Depending on the power of the Holy Spirit that resides in us as we claim Jesus Christ as our Lord and the Savior. And that power allows us to love. Allows us to go and to do, to serve, to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. To bless others as God blesses us. May you take care. May God bless you, your family, your friends. Protect you from COVID. We pray for healing for all those who have it. Protection for those who are carrying them especially. More and more vaccinations, less and less cases. As we come back together to be a community. We are made for community, not isolation. May God take care of you. Hope you'll join us on Sunday mornings at 9 and 11 in person and on Facebook Live and YouTube. Take care. God bless.